Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, MSP, so Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 16th of April 2024. If you don't know what the lines on my map mean, please pause the video and check out the key on the screen. I'm not going to go into the Institute for the Study of War granular report, although I will pick out what I have picked out one source from there to just look at a geolocation. As you can see, a couple of blue pins on the map today which is always good to see from a pro ukrainian point of view by and large no change to the northeastern access at least not from kupiansk to svatova and from svatova to uh to kramina there's only a, a small change possibly uh, west of kramina at the torska tourney salient here so if we pop into Suryat maps we have no we don't have actually there was no uh, mapping, uh, there's no tweet to back this up. But anyway, the claim is that the Russians have made some small gains towards Terni just on the outskirts. Again, we have seen that, we've seen that previously down in this uh, wooded area here. Uh, and then the Ukrainians pushed the Russians right back and retook that land. There's a, a bit of a rejig or a counter attack by the Ukrainians further south in another tree line below the one I was just talking about. And that's good news if the Ukrainians are pushing back there, getting the Russians away from Yampolivka. It could well be here that the Russians have attacked along this line. Uh, but it is highly probable that they haven't taken control of that land because we've seen previously in this exact area that Surat Maps has a tendency to, well, it, we, we see it all up and down the front line, really, that has a tendency to say control uh, of an area is anywhere where Russians have, have set foot or driven, even if they have been uh, blown up and no longer exist. Uh, they control that land. So we'll see whether that is consolidated tomorrow, whether other mappers agree with that. But it looks, I, I would say it's probably unlikely. They probably just had a, an attack in that direction. But I am massively speculating. So take what I say with a pinch of salt. Um, but good news to see some blue pins on there. Coming down past the Seversk front line, no changes to that area, even though it's been fairly active around Bilohorivka and indeed between uh, Vesele and Borestova there, but nothing today. In fact, I think it's quite a bit of action around Verknokomyanska and Verknokomyanka. Uh, the, the Russians have bombed here today. Uh, I know that an older lady has died in that settlement, as I believe. Uh, but yeah, so there's, there's some activity going on there. Um, and then we come down to Bakhmut. Uh, we can look to the east of, uh, sorry, west of Bakhmut to Chazyv Yar and see that see some gains by the Ukrainians here. I think this is another case of walking back uh, a previously overzealous mapping of Ivaniska, where Surat Map said that the Russians took full control of Ivaniska. The other mappers did not agree with this and still haven't, and this has been about a week. Uh, in the difference here. So that I think is significant and probably does show that the initial claim by Surat Maps was overzealous. And in fact, I, I have heard personally from a source that they are still fighting in on the outskirts of Ivaniska. So this would definitely track with what I've heard. And I heard that a good couple of days ago. Whether that's still the case, I'm not sure. But I, I believe there must be some evidence, hard evidence that Surat Maps has seen to change that and not really talk about it. Uh, but the reality is I think they were uh, overzealous, as I say, to begin with. Right. We're going to spend a little time looking at Chazyv Yar. Um, indeed, we have uh, the claim here. This could be a tweet from yesterday's claim that uh, there are some slight gains in this area. Yeah, I think it's this this tiny area in a micro uh, district, the canal micro district there. Uh, so I think that was that was on yesterday's um, map. But that's the tweet that came afterwards. We're going to pop into Emil Castelhelmi, Helmi, uh, I think a Finnish analyst here that, that's giving an analysis of Chaziv Yar. So we can see Bakhmut is here. We have Chaziv Yar there. We have the canal that comes up here. The That micro district that I was just showing you some small advances there. We have Ivanivska, I think, down here. And the road uh, and the high ground between uh, the edge of Chaziv Yard that we we're talking about, uh, high ground there, and then comes down to Ivanivska here, 
underneath this road, if I am correct. I think I am correct. Anyway, uh, there you go. That's the canal district of Chesivyar. One of the most significant current battles in Ukraine is taking place in the small city of Chesivyar. In this thread, I will analyze the current situation, defensive preparations, terrain, participating units, various scenarios, and future developments. Chesivyar is an important city. It's the last somewhat larger built area before the crucial crossroads town of Konstantinivka and other important cities in Donetsk. Encircling the city is difficult as the Donetsk can Donbass Canal forms a difficult obstacle for mechanized units. Let's put that on my map. So Chazivyar here has that canal that comes through up here uh, and sort of splits the uh, the canal di micro district off from the rest of it, but also prevents, uh, uh, to some degree, a larger encirclement, or at least it'll be very difficult. And this is an important city because it acts as a buffer uh, before you get to places like Konstantinivka, Druzhkivka, Kramatorsk, and Slovyansk. So the Russians will really want to take Chazuyar if they have any hopes of those other settlements. Um, as uh, Emil Kastelhelmi's Helmi continues, Ukraine has constructed several layers of trenches and other defensive positions north and south of Chazivyar. Even if the Russians managed to cross the canal at some point, they would still need to break through multiple fortified positions to seriously threaten the area. Uh, in addition to the canal and fortifications, Chazivyar's terrain poses... <coughs> more challenges for the enemy. The area is dotted with small water bodies, fields and somewhat industrial zones. The city is also located on higher ground. And this is absolutely true. I've said this a number of times that there are foresty areas, there are water areas, there are marshy areas. This is higher ground. Uh, let's have a look at the heights here. So down in the bottom right of the, of the screen, you can see the height. Uh, that's 241 meters. Uh, going down to 200 meters, so it's sort of 40 meter difference there as it rises as you come uh, further to the west. So it, it, there are these, these challenges that the Russians would have to overcome. Um, okay, so at the moment, Russia has already entered the eastern edges of the city known as Canal. The buildings in the area can provide relatively good defensive positions. However, the defenders must be supplied through open terrain and over the canal, which can become an issue. The forests and other covered areas provide shelter for the defenders, but they also come with some difficulties. It allows the Russians to conduct infantry attacks with their so-called infiltration tactics. Such actions have been observed in similar terrain before. So while these, and I don't know what the state of these forests are, to be honest, in terms of foliage, uh, I imagine they have been fairly hammered away over time because Chazidyar has been uh, really bombarded since Bakhmut was was taken and, and while it has been taken as well um, because this was kind of a staging post for Bakhmut for the defenders, for the Ukrainian defenders and so this was being consistently hit. But otherwise these trees would make it very difficult for the Ukrainians to get uh, effective um, drone attacks on the Russians and so it acts as cover for the attacking Russians and that's why well, I think we've seen them move through the forest area to the south and we see them try to move uh, in the forest area to the north as well uh, getting up to here around the canal uh, micro district and whether they'll sort of move up this road in this tree line I, I don't know we shall see but anyway uh, sometimes you can get benefits as a defender but sometimes benefits for the attacker too with the same terrain and features um okay uh, this means that the russians will persistently try to attract the defender by throwing infantry detachments in these corridors in order to find exploitable cracks while also pressuring ukrainians elsewhere in the city if success is achieved it will also be reinforced uh, and that's what, what we see often from, from the Russians is they do that kind of deep battle attack doctrine where they try and attack in a number of places, either on the whole front line or in a particular place uh, and throw in uh, units here, there and everywhere. And as soon as they find a bit of a weakness, then they pile into there and try and get that foothold and then you know driving that wedge into a crack, isn't it? And then beating that wedge further into that crack. Because of these aforementioned reasons, keeping the canal can be tricky. The Russians can try to cut the supply routes by infiltrating the Ukrainian defences from the north, and the terrain makes heavier counterattacks supported by armoured vehicles difficult. Holding these dense and covered areas requires more troops. AFU must have reserves ready so that the 
any possible gaps can be quickly filled. This can be difficult for the Ukrainian brigades, which are not fighting in full strength. Russia has plenty of expendable manpower. That said, the claims from Sursky and uh, Ustem, uh, Rustem Umarov are that the Ukrainians are uh, um, bringing reinforcements to Chaziv Yar. Uh, we don't, I don't know what the situation is with the Russians. Uh, it's possible that the Battle of Chaziv Yar won't consume Russian vehicles as severely as the operations in either in other directions like in Terni, Novomokhilivka, or in the fields west of Avdivka. Uh, available data has not shown an, as extreme equipment losses in this direction. This is true. Uh, we have seen some heavy losses in very uh, relatively fewer spots than we have seen at all the places previously mentioned. But because of the recent heavy losses elsewhere, it wouldn't be a surprise if Russia wanted to switch to more infantry-based action in Chazivya, as the terrain and Ukrainian artillery ammo shortages would also enable it. Next, let's see which units are fighting in the area. Russians likely have elements of the following units in Chazivya. So it is a list of different units, 98th Guards Airborne, so there's a VDV, the, the more supposedly or once were elite troops, wouldn't say they are anymore, 11th Guards Assault Brigade, 4th, 85th, 200th Motorized Rifle Brigade, some additional regiments from other units and also Territorial Reserve regiments. The Severe V Brigade is likely in the area. The Terek Cossack Brigade may also be present. The actual size of these units is unclear. It's important to note that when I'm saying elements of certain units, it means the whole isn't necessarily fighting there. They might not even be, this is me talking, they might not even be a whole. Uh, these, these units, as indeed with the Ukrainians as well, are going to be fighting under strength, largely right across the front line. However, many Ukrainian brigades are suffering from a shortage of men, exactly, uh, which may explain the current positioning on a relatively short front. There's no indication that the Russians will be experiencing the same issue, at least not in the same magnitude. Still, actual breakthroughs are rare, and the Ukrainians are still able to fight a defensive battle. Even if the Russians manage to eventually push through Chaziv Yar, it doesn't mean they will automatically gain a significant strategic victory in Donetsk. It took the Russians almost a year to advance about five to six kilometers from Bakhmut to the eastern parts of Chaziv ZVR. However, uh, Ukraine is in a worse situation than before and multiple scenarios are possible. If Russia wants to capture large areas in Donetsk, the time is now. It's precisely what I've been saying over this week, which is, you know, now's the time that the Russians should be absolutely piling in everywhere they can. So this is the moment before Ukrainians get. So if they get that, that bill through from the Americans, they'll get a load of equipment. Uh, the Europeans are trying to fill that gap and that will take time. We've got the Czech initiative now saying that they found 180,000 today, announcing 500,000. Not they found more than that, but actually contracted and, and, and are on the way. This all takes time. Once it starts hitting uh, Ukrainian logistics, then Ukrainians will get the, the wind behind their sails. Now's the time to do this. But since the Russians are only attacking in a number of places, these kind of three areas of the front line, I mean, I don't even think Terni and Torska is an area that they're properly hammering anymore because they've lost an awful lot there. I'd say Chaziv Yar, Avdivka and Novomikhilivka area that they're only attacking three places and we are not seeing the huge numbers of vehicles that they've thrown at attacks previously, even last month, month before, six months ago, 12 months ago, 18 months ago. I think the Russians are in a poorer position now than they've ever been. But the Ukrainians are in a poorer position they've been since the beginning of the war. So like I keep telling you, it's about, you know, one side is getting attrited and another side, then the other side is getting attrited as well. And and that means that that the beginning of the war, it was like, yeah, both sides are up here. They could do massive attacks, but uh, not get anywhere. And both sides get completely attrited down to this level. They do a scapegoat's massive attack, relatively speaking. And even though the uh, even though Ukraine has been massively attrited, they're able to rebut the much smaller massive attack of the Russians. And then you're in you have the same situation. You Russians might might grind on and take these gains. Chatovia might well fall and probably will uh, by summer or by the end of summer, whatever it may be. But at what cost? The Russians are just exhausting themselves and it's all about a mass mobilization. But as discussed the other day, they haven't mass mobilized yet. Why not? And it's because it would just cause economic, uh, I, w I won't say collapse, but a an economic heart attack really for, for, the, for the Russians and maybe a, a, a hit to their to the popularity of the war, etc, etc. So I think this is 
a really fascinating time in the war like that uh, it's, it's horrible people are dying i mean fascinating in you know in a purely abstract kind of strategic sense where both sides are really struggling and either side maybe could crumble if, if one side could get like a major sort of victory but that kind of major victory is, a, is potentially a pipe dream um, anyway, however, Ukraine is in a worse situation than before and multiple scenarios are possible. If Russia wants to capture large areas in Donetsk, the time is now. If Ukraine message, manages sorry, to hold Chaziv Yar, it will make the Russian political goals significantly more difficult. They aren't, and There aren't any shortcuts towards the belt of cities between Konstantinivka and Kramatorsk. So a failed offensive here means a more difficult grind somewhere else. And and that's true. So you can see a lot of rationale for putting in huge numbers, huge effort into defending Chazivyar because I, you know, you got to fight somewhere. Otherwise, if you just give them Chazivyar, say we don't really need it, and then go and take somewhere else, then the Russians just move forward and then fight you in that new place. So as long as this is the optimal defensive position, and there might be more optimal places behind, but the problem is you allow them to get further to the west, and you allow this belt of cities. Uh, to be even m more effectively bombarded by the Russian artillery that gets closer and closer. You start having mortars taking their effect and w or whatever. Yeah, it, it's, a, it, it's a problem. So you want to keep them away from there. You want to fight in Chazivyar, and I think the Ukrainians will put up a, a really big fight there, but they are on their knees. It's just that I don't really think Russia are particularly flying at the moment. Um, and sort of similar situation in Avdivka, where the, the Ukrainians have been beaten back there. They're desperate for equipment. They're on their knees. But also the Russians are losing massive amounts of equipment around here. We've seen around Tonyanka just stupendous amounts of kit lost there. They are, I think, having some success that is worrying up in this northern area. They are appear, appearing to be even closer to Nova Bakhmativka now as they move along the railway line. Uh, between Nova Konyove, where they've had some success over the last uh, week, uh, and Berdichi. So this is, I think, the most worrying aspect of this whole Avdivka front line here, because they're going to get in, come down here uh, in on the higher ground and not have to navigate themselves across the River Derna there. So uh, we come down to Semenivka, Berdichi to Semenivka, and the area in between this is an agreement of the mappers, so this might not be uh, any movement from the last 24 hours. This was the movement that Surat Maps claimed yesterday, and it appears the other mappers agree with that, and I think it's hardly surprising. It's just filling in the area between Semenivka and Bedici on the eastern side of the river, so that's pushing the, Russia, the Ukrainians back over the river, and that was always going to happen. What I think is, is important to note is this, that the Ukrainians have pushed, as according to Surat Maps, unless it was an overzealous mapping, which is always possible but the ukrainians might have pushed the russians back at semenivka either way they're not as far into or at least they haven't taken it all or pretty much all of it i mean it's quite long and thin right this is i guess halfway but it looks like uh, the major part is here by by that the bridge uh, i guess across the river and uh yeah i this is worrying because the russians have a foothold across the river however i was listening to andrew perpetua and uh, Gick talk on Andrew Perpetua's live stream on Friday, and they they were saying, look, we initially saw some evidence of the Russians here, but we haven't seen any evidence of the Russians here for the last sort of three days or like, however long it was. And they're like, we don't know if the Russians are there. There is there there is no evidence to suggest that they control any of Semenivka, but there's also no evidence to suggest that the Ukrainians have definitely pushed them out of there. So it's just a big question mark. So at maps goes with, the, well, we saw them there once, therefore they control it. And that's kind of where we're at. I, I don't know. I've said that this is a really big problem previously. But I'm sure the Ukrainians will be realising that's a, a big problem, if indeed I'm correct. Uh, and they'll be trying really hard to push the Russians back. So they could have pushed the Russians back there. And, and we just, the mapping is just not correct on Surat Maps' uh, front. I mean, given that the other two mappers do not have the Russians controlling any land to the uh, west of the river um, until really you get up, well, north of the source, uh, north of Badici over here. So... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, could be some good news that they don't, the Russians don't control as much as Surat Maps had previously claimed. Let's go to some of the um, Surat Maps tweets about this. So the Russian army took control over the rest of the eastern shore of the Derna River, as mentioned, in the uh, in front of Semenivka. From the south, the Russian troops failed to take the central 
uh, Ukrainian army defensive line. On the other hand, Russian forces made significant advances along the railroad, taking full control over Zarya Dachas and reached the eastern outskirts of Novobakhmativka. So this is up here in that northern area. Only 1.2 kilometers remains from the first buildings of Ocheretnyi. Uh, it's interesting that, that that kind of the Ukrainians retaking or the mapping being wrong in that in that blue pin is a uh, um from the south russian russian troops failed to take the ukrainian central ukrainian army well uh defensive line well you had you had that under their control previously so what is it for, have the ukrainians pushed them back was it incorrect mapping always you know words words i think tell you an awful lot um or sometimes they leave you a bit non plus with threat maps uh, then we're going to go further to the south so that is past uh, umanska past pervomyski and nevelska all the way down to krasna harivka where there's some fairly substantial gains for Syriac maps and some smaller gains uh, for deep state ma maps. Andrew Perpetua, not yet confirming any of those, but you might see something uh, turn up in his next mapping update. So Syriac map says of this, the Russian army made big advances, and that is fairly sizable advances there inside Krasna Harivka. The Dutchers of the southeast at the southeastern outskirts of the town were taken until the cemetery. In addition, troops advanced until the train station and the southern streets of Zalich, uh, Zaliznichna, uh, Lermontova and Vosmoho Berezhnia. Uh, who knows where they are, but that's going to be uh, roads and areas in here. So there's uh, Lermontova, uh, this road, this road and this road, these three roads here. Um, so that's the area it's talking about. We see those gains, but that could be an attack that's been repelled. We don't know. That's how kind of Surya maps rolls. We'll see, I guess, over the coming days with regard to that area. Now, here we have, this is uh, going now down to uh, Nova Mikhailivka. So some gains possibly for the Russians there. A little bit of a worry as they're picking up steam in Krasna Harivka at the moment. Nova Mikhailivka, Andrew Perpetua has called this like a failed attack, even though they have taken most of Nova Mikhailivka. He's previously said like the amount of equipment they've lost here is basically why you're seeing them try again in other places, um, because this has been like hitting their head against a brick wall. I, I, I can't speak to the accuracy of that, but they have certainly lost a phenomenal amount of uh, equipment and personnel there. And if, if they do eventually take Nova Mikhailivka, which kind of looks like they will, again, it's always like, at what cost and will it have been worth it? Well, actually, um, the Institute for the Study of War, the American military think tank, said that the Ukrainians have made some gains back in this area. Shadow posted a video of the elimination of Russian assault squad in Nova Mikhailivka, says Gick from Andrew Perpetua. Well, not from him, from his team. Um, UA infantry still in the trench at this position. So let's plug that in. Uh, some sad 155er missed the exit, YOLO'd further and got hit by an FPV drone at another place. Uh, so 155er, I presume, means from the 155th Naval Infantry Brigade, which is a Marine VDV. Sorry, uh, oh, it's a VDV. VDV or Marines, so paratroopers or Marines. Hmm. Uh, anyway, one of their elite elite units uh, getting uh, hammered in that area. Anyway, the idea is that Ukrainian troops are here, and that means that uh, yeah, you would assume that Andrew. Uh, sorry, uh, you would assume that this is grey zone, and that Surat Maps is not correct in their assessment that the Russians control. Uh, quite a bit of land to the west of there. Um, not not sure if that has an effect on areas to the north, but you can see that that, that confounds some of the claims from uh, Surat maps uh, there as the Ukrainians are there and the flushing out Russians. Uh, I would I was rather confident, confidently suggest that this is a grey zone uh, and either side controls it. Um, so, you know, this is often the case. You, you can see so often along the front line, there's this big difference between often both Deep State Map and Andrew Perpetua, but certainly between Andrew Perpetua and Surat Maps. And hence their consistent arguments with each other on on social media. Uh, Andrew always often calling out Surat Maps. Surat Maps get, gets all defensive. Uh, and yeah, the, I, I would 
side with Andrew Perpetua just to be more conservative. Um, but as I keep saying, these these claims often end up being true because the Russians are pushing inexorably to the west. Anyway, some gains further to the south here, to the west of Solodka, uh, between Novomikhailivka and Volodymyrivka here at the bottom of the Donetsk uh, front line. Um, I can't speak to any details about what's going on there, other than the map has changed there. Come across to Veliko Novosilka. Deep State map has some small changes with and uh, with Suret maps in an area of some uh, tree lines or a tree line uh, by uh, Staromyorska, but no, no, nothing huge there. Uh, and again, some really big difference there between the, the, the mappers with Andrew Perpetua, much more conservative in his claims there. Uh, no change to Robotina, although I think what do we have here? Yeah, so this I think is from yesterday possibly. Um, and then the tweet came out after the mapping change was made. Uh, here, situation in uh, that place. Um, let's try it out. Veliko uh, Novoselikovskaya. Not bad. Uh, Russian army made small advances southwest of Staromyorska. On the other hand, oh no, sorry, this is not. I was, I thought that was Robotna. No, this is back in the Velika Novosilka. Then it's not. It's not from yesterday. That's me talking absolute nonsense. Uh, it's it's this area that we're talking about there. So uh, that's some success for the Russians there. On the other hand, the Ukrainian army managed to repel every Russian attempt to enter Urizhany. So that's interesting. So there's obviously been multiple attempts. And in fact, we have heard that quite uh, quite a bit recently. Urizhany has been back on in the socials a little bit with regard to Russians uh, trying to attack there, but not succeeding at all. And that's uh, admitted there by Surat Map. So no change to Robotna, no change to the Dnipro River Delta either. And that's that for the uh, for the update today. Really appreciate you uh, choosing to get your updates from me. Please like, subscribe and share. It really is appreciated. And uh, as I said earlier today, go and check out the interview I did with Sean Pinner, who was captured in Mariupol. It's on my lives. He's captured and tortured by the Russians. And it was a really fascinating interview I had with him. Uh, just an incredible human being. Uh, so that was a really good chat. I enjoyed that. I always like it, again, clapping myself on the back here to a degree, so I don't mean to do it like that. But um, I, do, I do like it when I when I speak to people I I always feel bad if they've been interviewed a lot by other people. And I had this with Ada, Ada Wordsworth and um, Sean Pinner. And after them, after the interviews, both of, the, both of those said, look, I really enjoyed that because you asked me questions I'd, n I'd never been asked before. And I've done this like hundreds of times. I'm like, that's good. That's exactly what I wanted. And I was really upset because there were two questions I had on my piece of paper that I never got to ask him that were like, the, the, they were quite dark questions. They really got got to the heart of the matter. And I never got to asking them, and I, I kicked myself afterwards. Anyway, go and check it out. See what you think. Uh, and yeah, take care. Speak to you soon. Toodle pits.